CIMB's Dato Sri Nazir Raza is stepping down from his position as group chairman and all other positions within the group by December 31st. CIMB said in a statement that the board will now activate its succession plan to decide on the next chairman and the exact date of handover. Nazir has served CIMB for 29 years since 1989, including as group CEO for 15 years and as group chairman since 2014. Under his leadership, CIMB grew from a fledging corporate finance franchise into a top Malaysian investment bank and a universal bank in ASEAN. In the statement, Nazir said, it was always going to be hard to find the perfect moment to resign from the lender. Ultimately, he decided that it would be most appropriate to leave upon the completion of the group's T18 initiative. He added that CIMB has an excellent management team led by group CEO Tengku Zafal Aziz. He believes that the firm's continued success after his departure will affirm that his CIMB mission has been accomplished. The MOF says developers must lower home prices or risk having the SST exemption for construction materials and services yanked. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng wants to see more affordable homes, particularly units priced at 400,000 ringgit each and below. He says perks like freebies and rebates are meaningless and that savings from the SST waiver must be passed down to buyers. Lim acknowledges that there is a need for incomes to rise. However, he says home prices are just too high for salaries to catch up. The move is also costing Putrajaya a big chunk in foregone revenue. Should developers refuse to budge, Lim says Putrajaya may review the waiver. In response, Developers Association Reda says it's conducting a study to see how much lower home prices can be without the tax. President Dato Swam Heng Chun says the study will be presented to Lim before Budget 2019 is tabled on November 2nd. Migrant workers who wish to extend their existing permits for up to three years will need to foot 80% of the annual 10,000 ringgit levy. The levy applies to foreign workers who have been employed here for over a decade in the sectors including manufacturing, construction and plantation. It was supposed to be borne entirely by employers. However, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng says the government understands that the levy is quite a heavy burden. Therefore, the employer's share will be shaved down to 20%. Putrajaya will gain about 1 billion ringgit in revenue for about three years from this levy. Aside from bolstering government coffers, Lim says the permit extension would also help ensure uninterrupted economic development. This is because firms will be able to retain skilled foreign workers instead of recruiting and training inexperienced staff. A former chief of national carrier Malaysia Airlines says a review of its current operations is necessary. This is after he deemed its 6 billion ringgit restructuring plan a failure. Ex-CEO and MD Tan Sri Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman told Bernama in terms of losses, this turnaround plan has failed. Malaysia Airlines' sole shareholder Kazada Nacional had injected billions to support the airline's five-year turnaround plan launched in 2014. However, Abdul Aziz pointed out that instead of making profit, the airline recorded losses for three consecutive years. He says high salaries paid to foreign top executives and the purchase of Airbus 380 aircraft were among the factors to blame for its high operating expenditure. 2018 is the fourth year of the airline's turnaround strategy. He says if Malaysia Airlines shows remarkable improvements this year, then there is hope for the carrier. Otherwise, he says, Putrajaya must take another look at its team, saying the government's money is the people's money. Singapore's competition watchdog has fined Grab and Uber a combined 13 million Sing dollars or 39 million ringgit. The Competition and Consumer Commission of Singapore says this was to deter completed, irreversible mergers that harm competition. Uber was fined 6.6 .6 million Sing dollars, while its then closest rival in Singapore, Grab, was slapped with 6.4 million Sing dollars penalty. However, CCCS has not pushed for the deal to be wound down. In March, Uber sold its Southeast Asian operations to Grab in return for a 27.5% stake in the Singapore based company. According to CCCS, after the deal was inked, Grab held 80% of the city state's market. It also found that Grab had raised prices by 10 to 15%.
Grab also had exclusivity agreements with drivers and taxi firms, which Singapore's competition watchdog ordered removed. In response, Grab called CCCS's conclusion unfortunate. It argues that commuters are still free to choose between street hail taxis and private hire cars. The ride hailing firm adds that private hire car drivers' incomes are directly impacted by intense competition with street hail taxis.